And we'll be starting in just a minute. Okay, perfect. So Tim can hear me. Let's uh, let's get going over here. Let me uh, switch my screen over. Okay, welcome. I am Matt Seuss, and welcome to another live episode of Luminar Live. Going to be talking about Luminar 2018 today, and we're going to be talking about workflow with Luminar 2018 in particular. So we're not going to be doing any photo editing, but we're really going to be talking about moving photos around from uh, from different programs. Now, um, I'm again, I'm using a beta version of the software, so uh, you know everything might not look exactly like it is once the uh, once Luminar does ship. So just keep that in mind. They're still working on some enhancements to the program. Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, talking about Luminar using it as a standalone program first. Now, you can uh, Luminar can accept you know pretty much any type of file, normal file format, TIFFs, JPEGs, RAW files. Uh, I have a PSD that I'm going to uh, bring over here, and I'm in my Finder in the uh, on the Mac. I'm just going to drag that over to the Luminar icon, and this is how I normally get my photos in here. And uh, we'll let this load. There are other ways too. If you are inside of Luminar already, you can click on Open, and you can open images. You can also do batch processing as well. Once you have your photo inside here, it's really just a matter of trying to figure out, you know, what's your workflow? Do you want to start with a preset? You know, go ahead and just grab a preset and you can lower the amount, the intensity of the preset. You can do some adjustments to any of the sliders here. A lot of times, you know, sometimes the presets are a little bit too punchy for me, too strong. So I'll go in here and like on this photo here, I'll lower some saturation and some vibrance. Uh, you can also add filters too. And uh, here's something new. I just got a new copy of uh, Luminar 2018 this morning. And uh, here's one thing that they've already added. And uh, they brought back the little descriptions to each of the each of the filters that are in here. So that's a cool little addition to it. So, uh, you know, one way is to start with working with presets. Another way is to, let me uh, delete everything here, is to uh, start with your own custom workspace or one of the workspaces that is already inside of, uh, inside of Luminar. You know, like the quick and awesome or the aerial photography landscape if i click on landscape that's going to give me a whole bunch of filters that are really geared towards landscape photography and then go ahead and make your adjustments from there now once you have a photo let's uh i'll just at least get this uh misty land here so we have a little bit of a difference once you have a photo that is you know that is finished you have a couple options here now on uh you know saving the photo or exporting it if you go up here under file and click on save this is going to allow you to save it as a .lmnr file. Now, uh, ignore the .psd here. This is a .lmnr file. That's the last extension on it. And if you don't see that on the Mac, um, go into your Finder preferences and make sure that you're seeing the uh, all the extensions on your files. If I save it as this file, I have the option to, of saving the original resources to the document and also the history as well. And if I saved it as that, it's going to save all of the filters, any masks that I did. It'll save everything in the history as well. So then I can open up that .lmnr file and uh, do some more editing to it, just as if I had, you know, just where I left off from before. If you don't, if you're all set with that and you don't want to save it in that .lmnr file, you can click up here and click on export to image. By doing that, you can end up specifying, you know, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, Photoshop document. You can change the uh, color space on it, the bit depth and whatnot, and save it wherever you want on your photo or on your, on your hard drive. And over here too, you can also open it in some of the other NIC programs that you have. Uh, you can send it to Photoshop, and if I click on this, it'll send this file directly over to Photoshop, and I can continue editing it. I can also send this to Lightroom, and if I click on Lightroom, this will end up processing the photo, and it's going to send it over to Lightroom. And while it's doing that, I'm going to uh, just take a look here. If you have questions during this broadcast, feel free to ask them. And if you're not watching this live, you know, feel free to ask questions as well. I'll be checking in and answering all the questions. I'll do uh, as many as I can live and also uh, in follow-ups too. Uh, Rich definitely likes the descriptions. Yeah, it's nice to have those descriptions back again. Okay, so I just sent this file from uh, Luminar to Lightroom, and what it's going to want to do is import it. So you get the standard import dialog inside of Lightroom, where I can then import this and add it to my catalog if I want. Let's get back to uh, Luminar. Uh, let me see here. So we have that, the open in. Again, sending it to Photoshop, it'll just open it up with all these changes applied in Photoshop. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's talk now. I'm going to close. Uh, let's close this. I'm not going to save that. And I'm actually going to go to Photoshop. So let's say you're starting from Photoshop now. Now here's this photo. You know, I just opened it up from my hard drive into Photoshop. And I want to use this inside a Luminar. So what I recommend doing is uh, using Command J or B Control J, I believe, on the PC to duplicate your layer. And if you do this, then any of the adjustments that you're going to do inside of Luminar will then be applied to this second layer. So I'll go up here under Filter, and I'll go to Mac Fun and Luminar 2018. And this is now going to send this over to Luminar. And while it's doing that, let's see if we have any more questions. Doesn't look like anything yet. Okay. So now this is in Luminar. And uh, let's see, I'll just pick a preset here. We'll do a bright day. Now you'll notice up on the top, it's a little bit different. Uh, we don't have that uh, little um, icon up in the right here to send it to other plugins, because basically we're now using Luminar as a plugin inside of Photoshop. So all you have now is an apply up here. And by clicking on apply, it's going to send it back to Photoshop. Uh, we also don't have in the file menu the plugin. Uh, there is a plugin file menu up on top there as well. So just a couple things to point out in particular that um, you don't have when you're running this as a plugin. I can click up here and click on file and save. And this will allow me to save that .lmnr file again if I wanted to re-edit this in the future. But if I'm happy with all the adjustments, if I click on apply, this is now going to send it back to Photoshop with those adjustments made. And we'll let that send it over to Photoshop. And again, feel free to ask any questions here. I'm monitoring the uh, the chat that we have going on. Okay, so now this is in Photoshop. See how it's on that separate layer. It's only on that separate layer because I added a second layer to this. Otherwise, it would have just been on my background layer. But now having this on this second layer, I can go in here and I can adjust the, uh, the opacity if I want and sort of blend in the effect from Luminar to that base layer. Okay, let's take a look now at Lightroom. Now, uh, Lightroom is kind of weird. It has a few different ways to get this photo into Luminar. And let's see here. Let's go up under File. And I'm sure a lot of people are used to doing File and Export. If you click on Export, I can export to a whole bunch of different things. You know, I can send it to my hard drive as a uh, TIFF or JPEG, whatever file. Uh, I have Luminar 2018 chosen right here. I have some presets here. I can edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments or open source files. So let's talk about the two of these things here. If you're editing a copy with Light Lightroom adjustments, what it's going to do is send over in the file format whatever you have specified here. So I have a TIFF right now, uh, Color Space Pro Photo RGB and uh, 16 bits. So it's going to send that photo over with all the adjustments that I made inside the develop, excuse me, inside the develop module. And it's going to send it over as a TIFF. If I click on op um, open source file, it's going to send over the raw file with no adjustments that I made inside of Lightroom. Now this is one way to do it. I don't prefer doing this because there's a you know there's a few different things you have to click on. Um, it's a little bit shorter if you click down here and go to export with preset, and then you scroll down to here it is. Uh, so Luminar 2018. Edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Again, that's what I was just talking about with all the adjustments applied. And it's going to send it over. When you do it this way, it's going to send it over based on the preferences that you have set up under external editing. So I have it set up that it's going to send over a TIFF and uh, Adobe RGB 98 with a uh, 16 bits. So that is how it's going to send it over to Lightroom. If I go to File, Export with Preset, and send it over, uh, let's see here. Open source files, that's going to send the raw file over with no Lightroom adjustments at all. Now there is another way to do it too, and that is under plugin extras, you can go and transfer to Luminar. And that's going to send the raw file over too. I, I never use this. I like to go over here to the, uh, to the export with preset and then choose between the two here. So I can choose between the Lightroom adjustments or the open source files as it is. Okay, see if we have any uh, questions here. We got, uh, let's see, Ron is asking, if I send the photo to Aurora from Luminar, is it sent as a uh, raw file? When Luminar gets its damn, I want to uh, open the raw files. Okay. Um, yeah, let me take a look at that and we'll um, talk about that because now we're talking about going between programs. Let me, uh, 
Let me finish up on this, and then I'll talk about that right at the end, Ron. So good question there. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Let's uh, take this photo, and let's bring this over here. So let's go through, and I'll go to Export with Preset, and we'll go with the uh, Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments. That's going to send that over there right now. And just wait for that to get over to Luminar. Oh, actually, you know what? I can answer your question right now, Ron, while this is loading. So you're asking if the photo is sent from Aurora to Luminar, or is it sent as a raw file? Uh, it's not going to be, because um, when you're, um, if you're doing brackets, you're going to have three photos. So that's going to be in its own, you know, photo um, of itself. It's not going to be a raw file anymore once it's sent over to, uh, to Luminar, because it's going to have three photos that are all combined. And so it'll be sending over a TIFF file. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so over here, we are now inside of Luminar. And I'll just add a uh, preset here. And actually, we'll just go with uh, black and white to make this obvious. And now over here, if I click on Apply, this will process the photo. And it's going to send it back into Lightroom into my catalog. And we'll be able to see that in just a second. I apologize for the uh, slowness here. I got a bunch of programs going on here in the background, so it's taking a moment to uh, bring this over. Okay, so now that sends that over, and I can see it right here in the top in uh, in my Lightroom catalog. Now I want to show you another thing here too, and let's see here. Grab that photo. Another thing you can do is just click on the file itself and click and drag from Lightroom and drag it onto Luminar 2018. Now if you do this, it's going to be bringing over the raw file into Luminar, and notice here, it's not I don't have those apply um, tags anymore. So it's not running as a plugin anymore. So I'm actually taking that raw file and dragging it onto Luminar, and now I have all those controls again where I can go here and send the file to different things like Photoshop or Lightroom. Uh, a benefit of doing this is because it's now not running as a plugin inside of Lightroom, I can go export it, save it to wherever I want in my hard drive, but I can also go in here and use uh, plugins. So I can send this to Intensify, Tonality, um, any of these other plugins. Now, I was gave a little bit of a hint yesterday on uh, where you can choose plugin and you can end up send, um, using any Photoshop compatible plugin inside of uh inside of Luminar. Let's take a look here and see how that looks. So, Silver Effects Pro. I'm going to click on that. I've already loaded that as a plugin inside of Luminar. And what this is going to do now is send it over to uh, to Nick's uh, plugin, um, Silver Effects Pro, and then I'll be able to make adjustments on that and then come back to Lightroom. So this is really cool feature now of light of Luminar, where it's going to be able to allow you to use this as your base program and potentially even uh, eventually replace Lightroom for a bunch of users here. All right, so I'm just going to click on a preset and click OK, and this is going to save the image and bring it right back into Luminar for me. And the cool thing about this is take a look up on top here, it adds it as a whole brand new layer for me, even renames it so I know which plugin that I used. And now from here, it's just, you know, business as usual. I can go ahead and if I wanted to, I could, you know, adjust this, fade this maybe a little bit. Maybe I didn't want the full black and white. I can go ahead and add filters and make adjustments to that. So really cool thing for uh, for the brand new Luminar 2018 is being able to use plugins inside of it. Again, if you're using Luminar as a plugin inside of Photoshop or Lightroom, you're not going to have that ability. So it's really when you're using it as a standalone program. Okay, I'm just about all done here. Uh, if I have any more questions, we'll see if anything else comes in through here. Doesn't look like anything right now. So, uh, hey, I want to thank everyone for joining me again. And uh, if you're watching this later, not live, you know, feel free to ask any questions inside there. And I will be here again on Saturday and Sunday with a couple more episodes of Luminar Live. So until then, I'll see you later. Thanks.